Welcome back to Boat Break. Today's video is simple. I am just gonna recommend you some really, really good new books. And these are all books I think you will enjoy reading over a long weekend. If you live in the UK, where we are based here at Pam Millen, you will know that we have not one, not two, but three bank holidays in May. We have got three long weekends, so we can get through a lot of reading. So I've got a nice big range of books to recommend to you for your long weekend reading. Get your pen and paper ready, get your TBR lists ready. I'm going to start with a short one because sometimes reading a really small book is a great approach to a long weekend because you can just flash through it all really quickly with your extra day. So a book that is newly out in paperback is Concerning My Daughter by Kim Hai Jin. This is a book that I absolutely loved. It's a real tearjerker. It is very, very moving and powerful. So this is a book about a woman struggling to come to terms with her daughter being authentically herself. Our narrator is a woman who has been raised in a very traditional society. She has been raised to prioritise traditional family setups and so she cannot accept that her daughter is queer. From the outset, hearing that description, I would have assumed that I would never be able to empathise with this narrator, that I might find this book too hard to read, but I loved it because this book follows this woman going on a journey. At the start of the book, her daughter, because of financial difficulties, needs to move back home and she brings her girlfriend with her. And the mother lets these two girls move into the house but she is very cold and unpleasant to the girlfriend. She really doesn't know how to accept this life that her daughter is living because she has been raised in a world that told her that that life wouldn't make her daughter happy. So ultimately everything is coming from a place of love. But at the same time as this family situation, our main character also keeps going to her job where she works at a care home for elderly people and she starts to notice injustice at her place of work and how people there who perhaps didn't have a traditional family set up are treated less well and that starts to really upset her and so of course she starts to draw the parallels between what she's doing to her own daughter. I think it's one of the most amazing things about reading is that you can find yourself really empathising with people who are so different to you and who see the world so differently to you and it's a real testament to how incredible this book is that I found myself empathising so much with our narrator, this woman who sees the world so differently to me. I've just seen there's a quote here on the back from the New York Times, which I think sums it up so well. It says that this book boldly takes on the daunting task of humanising someone whose prejudice has made her cruel, and it really succeeds in doing that. So that book is a really beautiful, short character study to dive into over a long weekend. On the flip side, you might want something really tense and page-turning, in which case, pick up Not Alone by Sarah Jackson. This is set in a dystopian near future in which climate change has caused the outside world to become toxic and unsafe, and so people are forced to stay indoors in order to survive. And our main characters are a mother and son, a mother trying to protect her son in this world that has become unsafe and she realises that she can't keep him indoors forever. She is having to go out to scavenge food. Eventually they are going to have to go out and seek a proper refuge with other people who can help. So a very different book to the last one I mentioned, although ultimately they are both about the love of a mother for their child in very different situations. This is about the lengths that a mother might be driven to to protect her child when the world is no longer a safe place for them to live in. Becky by Sarah May is another book that will have you flying through the pages. This one was so much fun. This is actually a retelling of the classic novel Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray. You don't have to have read that book in order to love this because as well as being a retelling of that classic, it is transposed in time and is set in the 90s in the world of tabloid journalism and all of the brutality that that world involved that a lot of us might remember. Our main character, Becky, is an ambitious woman determined to make her way to the top of that world of tabloid journalism, whatever the cost, whatever it takes, whoever she has to throw under the bus to get there. And so she is such a wonderful character to read about because she is so human, she's so wonderfully flawed and human. 
just like her namesake in the original novel Vanity Fair, Becky is this character that you will just love as well as being shocked by the things that she will do but ultimately you feel so much compassion for her. She's someone who has come from nothing and is determined to find her place in the world and so while you may disagree with a lot of her decisions and her actions, it's ultimately a story of an underdog making their way to the top and it's quite hard not to root for that in some way. Next, a very, very highly anticipated book in huge chunks of the book Community, One for My Enemy by Olivia Blake. This is a Romeo and Juliet retelling about two rival witch families, the Antonova sisters and the Fedorov brothers. And it turns out that crossing Shakespeare with Olivia Blake is a great way to generate high drama and high romance. Throw in some Russian mythology and a splash of practical magic vibes and you've got one for my enemy. This is the kind of book that people are getting obsessed with. They cannot stop talking about it to each other online, making videos about it, and so you are going to want to use one of your upcoming long weekends to catch up on the hype of this book. Also, this book has got fabulous quotes in it, such as this one. We can't curse all the men in the world, can we? Well, not in a single day at least. For some feminist historical fiction, I've got The Maiden by Kate Foster. This is actually based on a true crime story. The story of Lady Christian Nimmo, a woman who was charged with the murder of her lover in 1679. The headlines at the time branded her an adulteress, a murderess, and she was executed and her ghost is still said to haunt the place in Edinburgh where she died. And so we never really got to hear her side of the story, which is where this book comes in. The Maiden retells that story with a feminist revisionist twist, giving a voice to a woman who has otherwise been silenced by history. And the book questions what would have made such a respectable, privileged woman risk everything like that for an affair. And it also questions, was she really the only person in her lover James's life to have wanted him dead? This beautiful tearjerker is Sparrow by James Hines, a book I absolutely loved. This is another historical fiction novel. This time we're going back even further, all the way back to ancient Spain, to the Roman city of Carthago Nova. And there we meet a little boy, a little boy with no name, a boy of unknown origin, who is being raised there in a brothel, being raised by the wolves, which is the term used for the sex workers at this brothel. Which, by the way, I find really interesting if you know the story of Romulus and Remus being raised by a she-wolf. That is probably a translation of being raised by a sex worker. Anyway, thought that was very interesting. So, our little boy, sometimes known as Sparrow, because sometimes he pretends that he is a sparrow in order to fly away from the pain of his real life. He does not have a comfortable, easy life ahead of him, and we watch him grow up the first the early years of his life in this incredibly brutal, violent world. Some of the things that happen to this little boy are very hard to read about, but ultimately the book is so filled with love, particularly the love between the little boy and one of the wolves who becomes a real mother figure to him, and their bond is just incredible. The book is being narrated by this little boy years in the future when he's an old man and so we do get given a few little foreboding pieces of information about what might be coming next, mostly to remind us that things are not going to get any better. Anytime you think something wonderful might be about to happen, some classic twist of fate that's going to improve his fortunes, we get a reminder from the narrator in the future that this is not that kind of story. So it is a very, very sad book, but it's a really beautiful book. I loved the experience of reading it, and also the setting and the time period were written so wonderfully. The book really brought that whole world to life for me. I felt like I was there. It's like a Roman adventure story, but with some very sad bits. Talking of books that made me cry, Devotion by Hannah Kent is newly out in paperback, and at the time of me filming this, the paperbacks have not yet come into the office, so I can't show one to you, but I will show you on screen that this is what the stunning cover looks like. 
I cannot wait to get my hands on one of these for my collection. This is another book that I adored, another historical fiction, and this is about a journey undertaken by a whole community who are forced out of their homes in Prussia um, because of religious persecution, and so they set off on a long, long journey to Australia to find somewhere where they can live and be free. The book is set in the 19th century and this journey that they have to undertake by sea is a long, gruelling, dangerous journey with so many threats along the way, including illness, uh, spreading so fast in these tight knit um, quarters that they're living in, in the ships. And so it's quite a tense and terrifying book, but mostly it is a love story between two teenage girls who are on these ships. Hannah and Thea don't always have words for what the bond between them is. They don't live in a society that recognises their kind of love, but the love between them is so powerful and so wonderful to read about. I don't want to say too much and give too much away about this book, but I will say there is a turning point halfway through where the book turns from straight historical fiction into something else, and the bond between these two girls is forced to become something else. If you're looking for a happy queer love story, this may not be the place to find it, but if you're looking for a queer love story that feels so real, so powerful, and so true, I really recommend this book. I absolutely sobbed at it. My next book I'm also not able to show you in person, not because the copies haven't come in yet, but because they have been so popular, <laughs> I think they have been snapped up by everyone who has seen them in this building because everyone wants to read it and so I could not find a single copy in the whole office and that is Exiles by Jane Harper. So Jane Harper is beloved for her crime novels set in different parts of Australia. She is so good at describing her different settings and this particular book is set in South Australia in wine country. Federal investigator Aaron Fork, a very popular Jane Harper creation, appears in this book for the final time. In this book he is in investigating the disappearance of a young woman who went missing a year earlier at a busy festival seemingly abandoning her baby there in a pram. And of course there's a reason that this book has been so popular with all my colleagues. All of the things that you love about Jane Harper's writing you will find in here. Not just the incredible setting but also the tight-knit community with secrets to hide, the surprising links to Aaron Fork's own life and a mystery that will truly keep you guessing. And my final recommendation is a chunky one, Homecoming by Kate Morton. You could probably use all three of your long weekends to read this one. Kate Morton is, like Jane Harper, another very, very beloved author with certain trademarks that you just keep coming back to Kate Morton for more of. And of course you will find them all in here. The time slip mystery, the beautiful settings, including gorgeous big houses. But this time, something a little bit different for Kate Morton. Kate Morton is herself an Australian author, and her books so far have been set in English stately homes. But in this book, appropriately for a book called Homecoming, she is going home, and she has, for the first time, written a novel set in her native Australia. The book is set between parallel timelines, so in the present day, a young woman called Jess makes the journey home to Australia from the life she has been living in London. She goes back to Australia because her beloved grandmother has become very ill and she has to go back to help sort through her possessions. And while she's there, she uncovers clues to a mystery, something that happened back in 1959, the Turner family tragedy. This was when a whole family were found mysteriously dead on Christmas Eve in the Adelaide Hills. It's a murder mystery that has never really been satisfactorily resolved. I tore through this one despite how long it is, and I think you will too. It is a real Kate Morton epic spanning generations. It's about secrets passed through the generations of a family. It's about the lies that we tell to protect the people that we love. And it has got twist after twist after twist as you approach the end. So many parts of the story that I just did not see coming. So that's my second Australian recommendation. A long weekend might not be quite enough time to actually go to Australia, but reading a book set in Australia, especially ones written as beautifully as Homecoming and Exiles, is a great way to feel like you got away. <laughs>
So do let me know in the comments below which of those books you are planning to pick up for your long weekends. I also have loads more recommendations here on this channel. For example, I will link here to a video I made full of really, really short book recommendations. So if you are actually looking to pack in as many books as you can over your long weekends, then do click through to get some ideas there. And I'll see you next time.